In episode 6 of The Fall of the House of Usher, which was titled Gold Bug, a story based on flaws and imperfections, as we see several of these characters slowly but surely falling down the rabbit hole of madness. As Pym digs up disturbing information on Verna, we see Tam and her marriage on a decline as she hosts a product lunch that shatters expectations. As we open the episode with Tam, who's clearly sleep deprived, which is causing her to experience these blackouts and doing things she's not aware of or it appears that maybe someone or something doing things for her instead as she prepares for her big presentation. She notices someone walking by her room which leads her to finding this green box with a green bug emblem on it. She opens up the box to finding dead bugs inside. Now this leads her to trying to sleep but with so much on her mind sleeping is becoming impossible to do at this point. Now Dupin still isn't a believer of Roderick's claims of knowing all the details of his children's death as we cut to the scene of seeing Rod covered in blood showing off the sapphires said to give you sight in the afterlife. Details all the information on how he managed to get these all for his sister's birthday as it is revealed that he's speaking to his dead children. As Madeline arrives to her brother's office to find that he actually removed the device from Al's heart himself as she tells him that the company is in danger because Vic was on the board and he's starting to realize they're losing the numbers and they can potentially lose their company. As the number one priority right now for them is to find Verna but Rod is more concerned about taking back the control of the board and making sure that they don't lose their company. As the news is released to the public about the death of Vic and Al we see young Lenore is concerned about her own safety as her father reminds her that her aunts and uncles weren't truly ushers as he tells his wife the news and mentions how you can never trust anyone. Definitely appears that they're setting up this plot that Fred might be the one that ended up taking his own wife's life based on his thoughts that she was having a secret life without him. We see Tam continue to lose her mind as it appears that Bill actually came home to check on her after learning about Vic's death as Tam tells him that she is driven to prove the world that the ushers are actually good but then she realizes that no one was there as she was talking or at the very least maybe Bill was was there but he left the keys and it officially says that their marriage is officially over and her truth was never heard by him. Now Tam isn't the only one in this episode that's losing her mind as we cut to a scene of seeing Rod who is definitely diving deeper into madness as young Lenore checks on him to see how he's doing he blames the hallucinations of seeing all his dead children to his sickness also with the lack of sleep but he promises his granddaughter that he's going to keep her safe. Meanwhile, Pym gathers all of Vic's belongings at the crime scene as the police just sit there and watch. He discovers some information that leads him to Pam's address, which he's headed off to. As we finally get a scene with Juno kind of detailing her loneliness, as Tam comes by the house to check on her dad, we see Juno tells her how she was hoping to find a sense of family when she married Roderick, but things never really changed. We see Tam for once finally kind of drops her dislike of Juno and kind of shows her a level of sympathy, even though she didn't hug her or say much to her the fact that she didn't say anything mean or rude to me showed me that Tam has some type of relatability of this feeling of loneliness in this scene. As we see a scene with Madeline who's continuing to push the algorithm which will make people live forever we see that she gets a call from Pim who lets her know that he followed the address from Pam's file and it led him to Madeline and Roderick's child home which again fuels the idea that they believe that their family is under attack. As we cut back to a conversation between Dupin and Roderick as we see Rod telling him just how important special Pym has been to his family and just how far back he's been there for them as he describes Pym as a world traveler, one that has seen many things. His stories were legendary but also very mysterious as he recalls a story of Pym telling his kids when they were younger about him finding this realm of beings who live between time and space. If you all remember, this was the exact same line that Verna had told him and Madeline on the night of the New Year's Eve party. So the question is, is Verna one of those beings that lives between this realm of time and space. Now Dupin recalls this story of the 80s and bang the glass shatters behind Roderick and we see Tam's dead corpse walking towards him in this green dress. Now she reaches her hand out to help her father but then we see that Roderick realizes that it's actually Dupin giving him a hand to help him out. Now you all will notice the show has went along that not only have these jump scares become more like intense but Roderick seems to be getting closer to the dead which to me means that he's getting closer to death himself. 
himself. Flashback to the scene involving the basement mission with the ushers and Dupin as he gives Roderick a list of things that he'll need to bring down Rufus. Now Roderick is willing to take this risk that will definitely end his career if he's caught, something that makes his wife very proud of him as we see him in the basement making necessary copies of the paperwork they need to bring down Rufus. So I'm just so curious to see how all this is going to shake up because like I mentioned in my last video, this plot has been one of my favorites so far of this show. Now at this point, Pym has gathered up as much information information he can find on Verna, which isn't a lot to begin with, but he shows his information to Roderick and Madeline. First off, when it comes to this bar, which number one, wasn't a bar to begin with, it's been vacant since 1975, but it doesn't stop there as he shows them all these pictures of Verna standing next to real life individuals such as Mark Zuckerberg and other very famous and wealthy individuals that dates back decades, and I'm saying it goes all the way back to 1901. Cut to a scene with Lenore and her mother watching movies together and we get a really kind of interesting product placement of Netflix but even better we see Lenore ask her mother what's the next movie they should watch which is personally one of my favorites from Mike Flanagan as they highlight Gerald's game which obviously is a nice nod to Mike Flanagan to Netflix but also the two stars happen to be the stars of this show but more importantly we see her mother speaks for the first time and she tells her that she loves her which leads Lenore going down to her father of happiness and asking when will those specialists come for they can hopefully get their mother back but then we see that Fred really isn't that excited to get his wife back to good health and I believe that Lenore starting to realize that her father might do something bad to her mother. Which leads us into seeing this scene where we see Fred is continuing to use the drugs that Leo gave him but he's not the only one to use these drugs as we learn in this scene that he's been giving his wife the same drugs. Now at this point we see that his wife is slowly getting back to talking so he asks her just how long has she been in a relationship with his now dead brother Perry which we know that he's been thinking at ever since he got that burner phone in his hands. He's injecting the higher doses into her system, which to me means he's slowly preparing to killing his own wife. So not only has he lost his mind, his father's lost his mind, and Tam. So we're seeing the Usher family slowly killing themselves, but the only one right now that seems to have their head on their heads properly is Lenore, number one, but also Madeline. So right now, they're the only two that I can see surviving this massacre. Which, speaking of Madeline, we cut to a scene where she's visiting her brother, who's in the basement, which we know this is the same basement that he went to to take down Rufus, as she's trying to get him to get back into good spirits, to put his head back on his shoulder, to get back in the game, because his daughter has the event going on, which is one of the positive things going on with their company right now, but he can't seem to get his mind off of these bells that are ringing behind the wall. It leads Madeline to slapping him across the face, and obviously saying one of the funniest lines so far this show, as Rod just continues to claim that he doesn't know what's real, what's fake, but my question is, what is behind the wall what is that gesture did they put rufus behind the wall i cannot wait to find out what is that reveal what is behind the wall what is that jingling noise as it is time for tam's presentation and madeline tries to give her a pep talk telling her to break both of her legs now things start off pretty bad because soon as she gets on stage she thinks that someone's speaking on her behalf but she realizes it was just a presenter but we know in her head she thinks she's seeing candy walking around but she's able to gather herself and just for a little bit the presentation's going well but unfortunately she just completely drops the ball at this point in the presentation things had completely hit the wall as she thinks she sees candy and the audience wearing the same green dress as she's wearing so she is losing focus of the presentation and she just inevitably just breaks she thinks she sees candy all over her presentation all over the videos things just get worse from here as one of the video plays her sex capades with her husband on screen now she thinks in her mind that the audience sees this but she's the only one that's seeing this but it gets worse as she thinks she sees candy walking towards her Tam grabs the microphone stand and throws it and accidentally hits Juno's head, which I'm not going to lie, I feel so bad for Juno, but that scene was just so funny to me. Meanwhile, Madeline sees Verna in a crowd, which leads her to go into her. She reaches out to grab her, but unfortunately, there's nothing there, only black dust. As we end the episode with Tam, who's now at home, and she just knows that she's lost everything that she's built over the years, as Candy, who's just taunting her about Bill, as she breaks all the glasses around the house, the glasses bouncing in her face face she's stepping on glass meanwhile candy is not letting loose she even says that at one point tam ate her twin baby in the wound and maybe this is the part of her brain that's taken over i mean she is really in tam's head as we watch candy just continue to torment her which leads to tam admitting that she messed up putting a focus on the word up 
as we see that she sees Candy above her on the glass mirror and she hits it which causes the glass from above and below her and it impales her in the front and the back killing Tam. Which means we only have one of the Usher kids left which is Fred. This was based on an Edgar Allan Poe story which the plot focused on a character by the name of William who became fixated on this unusual gold colored bug as he discovered it and it led to him going insane. Now a lot of the story included codes which were invented by Poe which was used for the first time in one of his stories. Now one would say that code or hidden code in Tam's story connects to this bug which if you look up bug and you look up a code whenever you have a bug in your code by definition bug has many different definitions but by one definition a bug stands for imperfections and we can tie that to Tam and her imperfections her insecurities her flaws in her relationship and her company's brand which led to her losing her mind which ultimately led to her death. I really enjoyed this episode and thought it had a really good balance of Tam's story and her demise all while setting up everything going on with Fred also hinting at the truth of what's going on in the basement but also getting closer to finding out who is Verna and acknowledging all the success that they have in their lives as Usher families but what cost did it have to come at them losing their family them losing their sanity so I really liked how they shine a light on these characters losing their minds slowly but surely but questions I had after watching this for the first time what happened on that night of new year's i know we're leading to that but that's definitely a question i have that comes to mind did they kill rufus did they put him behind the wall what is the deal with verna and her making all these deals with famous people but what was it that the ushers did that made her want to kill all of the family members and also will lenore do something to protect herself and her mother from her dad as the fall of the house of usher episode six is in the books we have to say goodbye to mike flanagan who this was his last episode that he directed for the season which were filled with great moments and setting up what I hope to be a great finale. Very excited to see what happens next, but I want to thank you all for watching this video. Consider hitting the like button if you enjoyed today's breakdown and recap. Share this video, but also share your thoughts on this episode in the comments below. Click the video on the screen now or the link in the description of this very video to see my thoughts on episode 7. Consider subscribing today. You all are awesome. Hope you're staying safe, and I'll catch you all on the next video.